Hey everyone, I'm Yolanda Johnson Bryant, and you're watching The Other Side of the Dash. Hey folks, welcome back to The Other Side of the Dash. I'm Yolanda Johnson Bryant. And if you're new here, or if you haven't already, please take a moment to hit that subscribe button. Get this video a thumbs up if you like it and you find it useful and share the video. And don't forget, hit that notification bell so you'll be notified every time I post a video. So as you guys can see, I have a guest today. And this is my husband, Greg. Hello. <laughs> so you guys have seen Greg before, I believe, if not, hey, the first time you, you're seeing him. Um, we've been married for 13, it'll be 13 years this year. And, um, November 19th. November 19th. So yeah, this is my husband. So we're going to do something today that I have been telling you guys I was going to do for a while. And it's called um, 10 Questions with He and She. So that'll be the name of this segment. So we're going to be doing uh, different segments of questions with He and She. Where we're going to be uh, answering questions and answering your questions. And also talking about relationships, finances parenting and other things so he will be a frequent guest on other side of the dash so let's go ahead and get started with today's 10 questions with he and she you ready i'm ready you ready okay so we're going to take turns and alternate so i'm going to go first because i'm the lady yes she's the lady and you're going to go second okay so we each have five questions, totaling 10, that we're going to ask each other because we didn't want to go under that, over that, because this would be a long video. So uh, here we go. You ready? I'm ready. Okay. So my first question is, yes, this is a biased question. What do you like best about me? Other than your beauty? Yes, other than my other beauty. Than your beauty. And I my booty. <laughs> <laughs> I can't believe I said that. Go ahead. <laughs> <laughs> well, the the major thing I like about uh, my wife is it's her strength. She keeps this house running. I mean, even though I go out and I work or whatever, but she makes sure I have lunch and she runs the house and she makes sure the bills are paid, basically. So the major thing I like, I like her strength and she keeps us strong. So ladies, he brings a paycheck home to me and I pay the bills. <laughs> <laughs> okay, good. You go, your next, your question. Uh, if you had one day left to live, what would you do? I would try to right any wrongs that I had done. I would try to continually be on my knees asking God for forgiveness making sure I've already dedicated my life to Christ several times, but making sure I didn't, I didn't, you know, mess up and trying to get everything right. So to make sure that I go to heaven and not to hell. So that would be what I'd be doing. I'd also be, you know, loving all my family because that will probably be the last time I see them. So those are the things that I would be doing. My next question is, how would you feel if I made more money than you? Oh, that, that's never a problem because no matter what the way I look at it, it's money that's coming into the house because it's all our money. So it doesn't matter whether I'm not a chauvinist because <laughs> a lot of guys out there don't like their wives to make more money than they feel, feel less than. I don't. Um, it all comes into the house. And it accomplishes what we need, we want to accomplish. So I have no problem with that at all. So he does make more money than I do. I do work, so let's get that straight. I do work, but he does make way more money than I do at this time. Uh, however, everything here is ours. There's no separate check. I take that back. I do have a separate checking account. But it, it, he has access to it. it. It's only separate because it was something I had long before we got married. So... Um, we, he has access to it, but I will say 
even though it's our money, he will make sure I have some money for me. So that is one thing I love about him because that was not the question. But anyway, <laughs> um, you're next. Oh, uh, what's one thing no one knows about you? About me? Mm -hmm. That no one knows? That no one knows. I don't know that there's anything that no one knows. I mean, there's some things that not many people know. Um, I can't think of anything that no one knows because you know just about everything about me. Um, even my past, uh, you, you you have to tell your significant other your past. Some uh, think that you shouldn't share everything. I, I had to, I mean, truth is gonna come out sooner or later. You know, I'm no angel or whatever, but he knows, and I, I like to think that I know about his. Yeah. So I'm just going to go with a couple things that p very few people know about me. I was asked to pose for Playboy magazine. Yes, it's true. Not in my current state, folks. So don't be like, ah, what? <laughs> when I was 20-something, I was, and I became, first start becoming a writer. I was not even published yet. Uh, and I was going to school. I got my education from University of Phoenix. So there was this website, and you old cats know this website, fastweb.com. On fastweb.com, you could go in, they ask you all these questions, like were you born on the Indian reservation? Were your parents in the military? Just did you ever did your family ever work at McDonald's? Whatever. And they would try to match you with different kinds of grants and scholarships or free money or contests. And so I went on this to help pay for school. And Playboy had a um, a short story contest, and the prize was fifteen hundred dollars. And of course, Playboy short story it had to be an erotic story. So I came up with this story. I am not going to say what the name of it is because I'm saved <laughs> or saved. <laughs> I'm, I'm saved more than I was. Let's just put it that way. And uh, I wrote the story. I submitted it. And a few months later, I found out that I had won first prize, uh, which was a $1,500. And so you have to give their your contact information so they can contact you. So a, a lady, uh, first she emailed me and asked me what would be a good time to actually talk to me um, after she announced that I had won. And I gave her my information and told her the time and we scheduled a time to talk. She called me, we're talking, and she was telling me about the contest and contest, you know, about what I won. and why they chose me and yada 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 and any future you know contests they may be having or have you ever considered writing a book or whatever not matter of fact i have so she on the slide just kind of said also have you ever thought about posing because we would love to have you pose because we don't have very many african-american women posing in our magazine and then they really didn't um, I don't know if they do now. I haven't seen one, <laughs> so I don't know if they do now. And when she said it, I was really flattered. And I was, first I was going to say, well, yeah. But then I thought, that means nude. Then I said, well, can I get back with you on that? Because I needed to, at the time, it wasn't that, the, at the time, prayer wasn't the first thing I went to to get my answers. Uh, then my mother was alive. So I said, well, let me get back with you. I need to, you know, think about this. <laughs> so I called my mother. <laughs> and not very many of you know, but so you know, my mother was a piece of work. Uh, and the first thing she said to me was, how, because she was a deaconess and she was in the church. Uh, she was a proclaimed Christian. Um, and I say that because my mom was a kind of Christian that she'd be in a church saying hallelujah once she got out She called you every name in the book But she said how dare you would you you would you'll embarrass me and you better not or I'm gonna disown you And I, of course I got a few of those curse words So after she made me feel like total crap uh, I called the lady back and I told her I had to decline because I didn't want to bring shame on my family and then I thought about it, you know, looking into the future. If I had kids, that would come back to haunt me. So she said, okay. She said, but, you know, if you ever change your mind, you know, you have my information. Why did my mom call me 20 minutes later and say, well, how much are they paying? <laughs> I was like, you know, get off my phone, click. But uh, that is one of the, the things that very few people know about me. Okay, so my question is next. 
How do you feel about crowds of people? I am a introvert by nature. <laughs> I do not like crowds at all. I mean, if I can avoid a, a crowd, I would. Um, I'd rather, uh, you know, for me, uh, I don't like concerts. Matter of fact, I've never been, I've never attended a concert. Really? Yeah, I've never attended a concert because I don't like the crowds. And um, so if you see me in a area where there's a crowd, it's probably a must that I have to be there or um, something I just did, but I probably wasn't there alone. That's basically it. I don't, do not like crowds. Okay, in light of that question, let's kind of both do a bonus question, basically. Uh, in light of what's going on in the world today, has it changed how you live your life? As far as the crowds? As far as crowds or anything? It, yes. Yes, because um, now I don't even like going to the grocery store. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, I usually well, you didn't like going before. I didn't. Well, but I would have no problem at right, the grocery okay. store. But uh, I don't even like going to the grocery store because it's uh, now it's like it, it's funny because you you go into the grocery store and there's people they see you coming. And it's like, mm, mm. you know, everybody has that look on their face. You know, like uh, you know, you're too close, and uh, I. You know, it, in essence, it hasn't really changed my whole thought about crowds. I mean, it's actually solidified it even more <laughs> because now it's like, okay, now I really want to stay away from a crowd. And that, that's it. And I'm, I'm in agreement with him too. Uh, as an introvert myself, I didn't like clap crowds anyway. I mean, I'm a social, I'm a social introvert. And basically that means I'm an introvert, but uh, being that I have a business and I, you know, were do, was doing things, I still dealt with people, but it was always a comfort for me to come back home and just be to myself or just with my family. And people have asked me, you know, what has changed? The only thing that has changed really are three things, or actually four. One, he said it just made solidify the fact that we should stay away from crowds. But, uh... One, our grocery bill, you guys, in the last 30 days has been over a thousand dollars. Oh my God! And it's, I venture to say, it's close to two thousand in the last 30 days. It's ridiculous. Whereas we only spent like we could spend a hundred dollars a week, and and get by. But now it's like, oh my gosh! And then two and three is not being well two well two two and three, not being able to find any paper towel, tissue paper, bleach, or Lysol products. That's the only difference because I, I kept those things, um, but I had an overabundance, for example, of hand sanitizer. I didn't think I needed all that hand sanitizer, so I donated it to the school. The school just had banned the hand sanitizer, excuse me. So I don't know where it is, but I think now I shouldn't have given it away, you know, but really our lives have not changed. We still are a close-knit family. We do things together inside our little bubble or whatever we go out only when we have to nothing has really changed i'm cool right. uh going to the next one which is your question okay uh do you hold grudges or forgive easily um i don't hold grudges but i don't forgive easily um it depends on what it is if it's something light whatever i'll forgive depending on the numeration. Meaning if you've done this before, forget it. I mean, I'll forgive you, you know, cause God says forgive in order for you to be forgiven, but uh, I'm not gonna deal with you. Um, but when it comes to things like he and I, I eventually forgive and I don't hold a grudge. He may call this holding a grudge. I just don't be like, okay, we, we get into a disagreement cause we don't argue, which is the funny thing. I see couples argue we don't argue. We speak our, our peace and that's it. But the way I am when I'm upset is he's like, okay, he said what he had to say was very unpleasing. And he was like, okay, let's go outside and play ball. Mm -hmm. Not me. If it happens that way, don't touch me. Don't talk to me. 
let me process what I gotta do. If that takes an hour, if that takes a week, don't talk to me. <laughs> That's basically <laughs> how I am. And he will tell you, I will walk around his house and walk right past him, brush him and not say a word to him. <laughs> but, um, but eventually I'm like, okay, this is stupid. You know, and even lately, uh, it, it's happened much sooner because I'm like, you know what, life is too short and whatever. You know, I'll just say my piece and he'll tell you, I will say my piece and that's it. You know, so um, I don't hold grudges. I just don't forgive as easily. Now, outside of him, I'm going to forgive, but I'm not going to forget and I'm not going to deal with you again. So. My next question is, what are three things on your bucket list? Wow. Wow. I'm, I'm, it's, it's funny. I'm very, I'm, I'm a very simple man, really. Um, because what's important to me is that my family is taken care of. That's of the utmost importance to me. Um, but I would say, uh, travel. I would love to go to, uh, go to Paris over in Europe, the Europe area. That's, you know, one thing, seeing all of the Europe. Uh, all of the Europe? All of, <laughs> all of the Europe area. You know, like Italy and all of that stuff. Mm -hmm. um, that's one. Uh, the other is uh, basically, uh, I guess, being comfortable enough to take that trip. <laughs> You know, having everything be self-contained at my home because that's where the introvert stuff come into play. Uh, being able to uh, do my hobbies and everything. Um, and the other thing is... Uh, wow. Uh, seeing my granddaughter grow up and be a positive, positive force in society. Those are your bucket list items? Yeah, I would okay. love to see her, you know, I'd love to be here when she becomes that president, <laughs> you know, and run the world. You know? Oh Lord, watch out world. <laughs> Cause she's like her grandma, she don't play. <laughs> um, you're next. Oh, uh, if money didn't matter, what would you do with your time? I probably do a lot of what I'm doing now. I love doing YouTube uh, and uh, being a content creator. I love spending time with my granddaughter and raising her and trying to teach her the things so she can go out and be a product, uh, a uh, productive citizen in society. Uh, you guys know I'm an author, but I haven't written in ages. I would love to be able to just sit and write. Uh, I would like to do voiceovers. I would love to do voiceovers uh, for cartoons. And I would love to be a filmmaker, write movies and do things like that. So my creative side would basically just kick in. And those are the things that I would like to do. Um, yeah. That's good. Yeah, that's good. Okay. Now you guys have may, may have heard this answer already. I don't know if I put it on this channel or our other channel, which is uh, Bryant Family Values, but I'm gonna ask you again. But this time I'm gonna ask you why. What is your favorite movie and why? Uh. <laughs> Aging himself in three, two, <laughs> one. Um, I actually have quite a few of them, but uh, I would probably say Cooley High. <laughs> <laughs> Alexa, what year was the movie Cooley High made? 75. The film Cooley High was released about 45 years ago on June 25th, 1975. Really? Look, he even knew the year, y'all. I knew the year 75. <laughs> <laughs> Why? Well, basically, I think... I think the whole... the What I liked about Cooley High was... It was the high school experience, mm -hmm. you know, and they, you know, they had, they weren't bad kids, but they did stuff, you know, and it just 
remind me of how uh, some of the things that were done in our high school, you know, it's, you know, and it was, it was all kind of old school stuff. Like now it's, uh, I mean, back then, if you got into an, an altercation, it was, you used your fist. Right. You know, whereas now they're, they're going and shooting bang, the guns bang, yeah. and then they holding grudges. I mean, because back then, when you lost, you lost. There was they, no retali retaliation. There was no real retaliation. Okay, they kicked my butt. And Dude, you it. kicked my butt. <laughs> exactly. And a lot of times, you became friends. Right. You know, right after that, because usually when the guy, if you kick the guy's butt, he may have given you a run so heavy that you go, okay, if we do this again, he's going he's gonna to get me, you know. So this way, I just keep my upper hand. Sorry, the camera shut off there. And well, and like I said, and say become his friend. So, Cooley Eye was that type of movie. It was just an old school, uh, fun type of movie. Okay, yours last. Okay, um, this question, it just says family or friends. Now, family. I, yeah. I can answer that. Family. Um, being an introvert, I have associates, and I always teach my granddaughter that you have lots of what they call friends throughout your life your life who are really just associated associates or people you are associated with because in your lifetime you'll be able to count on one hand how many true friends you actually have and i give her the definition of what i think a true friend is and that true friend is going to be there throughout your lifetime you guys may not have talked in months or whatever but you can pick back up where you left off like nothing ever happened they're there for you or whatever and, you know there are people we deal with all the time um they're associates they'll go only so far you know or you will only go so far for or whatever uh but my family i'm going to go to the wire for my family um i love being around them even when they get on my nerves i love them to death i will cut you uh for my family and um so it definitely is family yes you i agree. agree i agree thoroughly agree so we hopefully this wasn't too long. Uh, we, like I said, we're going to do this as a regular segment called 10 Questions with He and She. So that was our first five questions. Again, if you have not subscribed to this channel or if you are new to this channel, please take a moment to hit the subscribe button, hit that notification bell, give us a thumbs up and share our video. And we'll talk to you guys soon in the next video.